Okay, so in this demonstration, I'm going to go over our carbon footprints. So a carbon footprint is the carbon dioxide emissions that result from the use of a product or a process. Um, everything you do has a carbon footprint in one way, shape, or form, um, at least at some point in, you know, uh, upstream or downstream. Even breathing, you know, we breathe out carbon dioxide. There's technically a carbon footprint involved there. It's so minimal that it's not a big deal, but uh, the point is that uh, basically everything you do has a carbon footprint associated with it. But again, from previous lessons, the primary carbon dioxide, first of all, is the primary greenhouse gas that we're worried about um, because one is the one it's the one we emit the most of, and two is the one we have the most control over of, and that's directly related to what we're going to go over uh, in this uh, demonstration, and namely that most of the carbon dioxide that we emit in the uni United States and in the world comes from burning fossil fuels. So when you burn a fossil fuel, it's going to emit carbon dioxide. Okay, so how much does it emit, it becomes really important. So you can treat this just like a unit conversion problem. So if you burn one CCF of natural gas, you're going to emit about 11.2 pounds of carbon dioxide. Fuel oil, which is what you use to heat buildings, um, it's number two diesel oil. For every gallon that burns, it's about 22 pounds. Propane, about 12 pounds a gallon. Electricity is about 1.5 pounds per kilowatt hour. Um, now, as I'm sure you know, uh, electricity itself does not emit carbon dioxide. Um, you're looking at a computer screen right now. The computer screen is not emitting carbon dioxide. It is not emitting carbon dioxide. However, if you know from previous lessons where we get our electricity in the United States and in the world, most of it comes from burning fossil fuels. Well, guess what? Fossil fuels cause the emissions of carbon dioxide. So even though your electricity is not actually emitting CO2 itself, most likely the way it's generated is emitting carbon dioxide. Now, of course, the exception here would be for renewables like solar, wind, hydroelectric, um, in some ways biomass, um, but we'll discuss that uh, in more detail in future lessons. So anyway, electricity does have a carbon footprint. This can vary significantly depending on your fuel mix, if you remember the fuel mix, um, where you get your electricity from. Now, gasoline, this is the stuff you burn in your car. Um, you get about 20 pounds of CO2 per gallon. So it's just slightly under fuel oil, which is just like diesel. Remember that these can all vary depending on certain uh, considerations, and that electricity itself, uh, with a double asterisk here, that can vary significantly depending on how you're getting your electricity. Okay, so I'm going to go uh, over a couple of examples of how to calculate a carbon footprint. This is a really, really important skill to have if you're going to work in the energy world. Um, you need to understand how to derive carbon footprints. If you, you know, if you do a, a, an energy audit, you do, uh, you work on a report, you know, regarding the energy use of a state or a locality or a country or so forth. There's a good chance they're going to want you to estimate the uh, carbon footprint. So this is a really important skill to have, and you can scale this up and down depending on the um, the size of the project you're working on. So let's look at a sample problem. So press pause and read the problem. Okay, so you have how many average home in the U.S. uses about 11,000 kilowatt hours a year? What's the carbon footprint? Okay, so this is a, again just use this, treat this like it's a, a, a unit conversion. So you have 11,000 kilowatt hours per year per household. Okay, and so our Carbon footprint is 1.5 tons of CO2 per kilowatt hour. So treat this just like a unit conversion. 1.5 pounds of CO2 per kilowatt hour. Okay. So that gives us uh, 16,500. Remember, so kilowatt hours cancel out. We're left with pounds of CO2 per year per household. So pounds of CO2 per year per household. Now remember we're looking for tons. We know uh, that there are uh, in one ton there are 2,000 pounds. So that's going to give us 8.25. This is tons of CO2 per household per year. Sorry about that. Okay so that is our answer. In this case it's so small that we do not um, have to worry about a metric prefix. Now let's look at the second one here. Um, okay, so now there are about 115 million household, households in the U.S. What's the total electricity-based carbon footprint in the U.S.? 
Okay, so this is then again going to be tons using a metric prefix. So we, we're going to start with our answer here, okay? So we have 8.25 tons of CO2. Now this is household per household per year, okay? And then we have 115 million households in the U.S., and that's it. So we just multiply by 115, and we're going to get 9487500000. So we're going to convert this, and this is tons of CO2 per year, okay, because households are going to cancel out. And so this is going to give us, to go into a metric prefix, is going to be 948. 0.75, and this is 3 six. that's 10 to the 6 tons, which is 948.75 um, megatons of CO2 per year, okay? And that is our answer. Okay, so let's go on to the next problem. So now... We have a commercial natural gas furnace. We're burning 10,000 CCFs of natural gas. Um, it's 85% efficient. How many tons of CO2 are emitted? Assume 11.2 pounds of CO2 per CCF. Um, this is a little bit of a trick question because all we really care about is how many um, CCFs of natural gas we burn. So if we're burning 10,000 CCFs and then we know that there are 11.2 pounds per CCF. I'm going to go right to tons, so uh, one ton is going to be 2,000 pounds. So now we get pounds, cancel out pounds, CCF, CCF. So we're left with tons. So we're going to take 10 divided by 2 times 11.2. So this is going to give us 56 tons of CO2. Again, we don't need to worry about a metric prefix because we're um, just, you know, we don't have that many. So let's, uh, I'm going to add a little wrinkle here. So let's say how much heat, so how much heat is emitted? And so this is going to be an efficiency problem now, okay? So we have 10,000, oops, okay, CCFs. Um, and then I just happen to know the conversion factor is, you could look this up, you have about 103,000 BTU per CCF, okay? So our BTU is going to be 103 um, three, zero, 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 okay? So this is BTU. And if we know our efficiency problem from the last lesson, um, so we're looking for the output. So output is input times efficiency. If you remember our efficiency triangle, output, input, efficiency. So our output then is going to be the input times the efficiency. So our input B2s are here. So that's 1.03 times 10 to the ninth BTU times uh, our efficiency is 85%, 0 0.85, which is going to equal 8755 and looks like we have five zeros. So five zeros here. This is BTUs. So to convert to a metric prefix, it's 875.5 um, M M BTU. So that's going to be our output. Notice our input was much higher than the output because we have, a, um, you know, less than 100% efficiency. Okay, so let's move on to the next problem. All right, an apartment building. Uh, so I'll let you read this. I'm not going to read through it all. So now we're dealing with the per capita. So we have a million kilowatt hours of electricity. Um, so we have tons of CO2 per capita, assuming 1.5 pounds per kilowatt hour. So, so we have 1 times 10 to the 6th kilowatt hour, okay? 
um, times 1.5 pounds per kilowatt hour. And then we have one ton is 2,000 pounds. Sorry about that. One ton is 2,000 pounds. So that's given us, um, so if we cancel out here, pounds, pounds, pounds. So we're left with tons. So that's going to be 750 tons of CO2. Sorry, this should say CO2. Oops, that shouldn't. say CO2 here. Okay, and we have 100 people. So we divide that by 100 people, okay, 100 persons. And we end up with um, 7.5 tons of CO2 per person or per capita. Okay, so there is your per capita. So let's do one more problem. Um, another efficiency problem, but now we're kind of working our way back from output. So we have our output is given. It emits 20 mmbtus of heat. We know it's 80% efficient. So what's the carbon footprint in tons? Um, oh, it's an oil furnace. So what do we need to know? We're missing something here. There's 139 BTUs per gallon and 22 pounds of CO2 per gallon. So let's see how to integrate this. Remember, we have our efficiency triangle. Okay, so in this case, we have our output and we have our efficiency. We need our input. So input is output divided by efficiency. So our output is 20 mmBTU. Our efficiency is 80%. So that our input then has to be 25 mmBTU, which is 25 times 10 to the sixth BTUs. Okay, so now we have our BTU input. So what do we do to get our pounds of CO2? So we have to convert this to gallons of oil. So another unit conversion, 25 times 10 to the sixth BTU. And then we know that there are 139,000 BTUs in one gallon of oil. Okay, so let's do that first. So this is 179.86 gallons, right? BTU is going to cancel out. And then we know we have 22 pounds of CO2 per gallon. And again, one ton is 2,000 pounds. Let's check our units. We have pounds, pounds, gallons, gallons. We're left with tons here. So our answer is 1.98 rounding tons of CO2. And there is your answer. So there are a lot of ways that you can calculate a carbon footprint. You can calculate through an output. You can calculate it through an input. You can use you know, per capita. So there are a lot of ways to calculate it. And all these um, calculations will help you on your um, homework or your lab and your homework for this week.